O. Garfield, a character we all know, but few actually love. Garfield needs no introduction. I'm sure we have all at some point consumed some form of Garfield media. Garfield started as a simple comic strip about a fat cat who loves Italian cuisine and hates Mondays. And thanks to the comic being a part of millions of people's newspapers, the comic exploded in popularity, becoming a cultural phenomena. And the publisher wanted to capitalize on it with merchandise. And Garfield creator Jim Davis was in a similar situation to Bill Watterson, the creator of Calvin and Hobbes. And whereas Bill Watterson didn't want to capitalize on his comic because he thought it would tarnish and water down the brand and destroy why people love the comic in the first place, instead Jim Davis went, Heck yeah, let's move my comic for all it's worth. We got shows, movies, plushes, books, games, and so, so much more. If it exists, there's a Garfield version of it. And this is how most people even got into the franchise. I'm betting most Garfield fans right now haven't even read a comic. Because nowadays, the Garfield franchise is really just merch. Garfield is really the new Mickey Mouse. A character we all know and like, but not as a fun and interesting character with media that we like, but more as a mascot, the idea of Garfield. But with so much Garfield content out there, some were bound to slip through the cracks and become lost media. And there's a fair amount of it out there. So in this video, I want to go through the stories of different pieces of Garfield media that have since become lost to time. From deleted mobile games to cancelled movies, let's journey through the wacky world of Garfield Lost Media. So let's start off with the earliest piece of Garfield Lost Media. So early that it's from before the Garfield comic existed. You see, long before the Garfield comic became the cultural phenomenon it is today, Jim Davis was struggling to be a comic artist. He made comic after comic, and some would get farther to publication than others, but they all ended up not working out. Except one comic. A comic centered on a unique, charming character, which the comic was named after, and I'm of course talking about... John. Yeah, John was a star of his own comic. I don't know how this comic was even remotely successful, John is like if white bread was a person, but one of the reasons this comic was semi-successful was because of John's charming and cute cat, Garfield. In this early version, Garfield looks nothing like the character he's known as today. I mean, he doesn't even have stripes. How could you, Jim Davis? You forgot the stripes. In this early version, John had a twin brother named Lyman, who had his own dog, Spot. I'm betting you had no idea Lyman existed, and you're not alone, because he's really only been in these prototype John comics, and he's only made small cameos in random projects since. That's really all the content in the John comics. Just these two brothers having fun with their pets. The Garfield character resonated with a lot of readers, and in 1977, fellow comic strip writer Tom K. Ryan suggested Jim Davis to focus the comic solely on Garfield. So Jim renamed and relaunched the comic a year later as a comic strip series starring Garfield, sporting new designs for all the characters. And a lot of the jokes and characters from the John comics were altered and reused in future Garfield comics, such as Lyman's dog, Spot, eventually becoming Odie. And eventually, the comic got to be in bigger and bigger papers, and the rest is history. But that original series, John, strangely, was completely lost media. Only a couple strips were preserved, being the last two strips of the series, which were more like a pilot for the Garfield series. And this is so weird, considering how iconic Garfield is, how many people must have read the John comics. You think that those comics would have been re-released, or at least preserved by fans, but nope, they were all lost. The only reason I can think of is that the John comics were only being made in small local newspapers in Pendleton, which is where Jim lived, so maybe just a small amount of people actually read them. But even if nobody actually read those strips, you would think that a newspaper company would actually catalog or keep track of the stuff in their own papers. But nope, all 112 strips in the series were lost. Until 41 years after the John comics became lost, on July 28th, 2019, a YouTuber named Quentin Reviews got in contact with people from the Pendleton newspaper in order to get scans of some old papers. But he wasn't even trying to find the John comics. He was trying to find some lost strips from the series Normnat, an obscure strip that was also lost media at the time and the worker Quentin contacted sent him the scans, and not only were the Norm Nat comics in there, 
he was also sent scans of 38 John comics. And funnily enough, the email with the John scans were titled, Here is John. It sounds so ominous. And after realizing what he'd found, Quentin focused on getting the rest of the John comics. And in January 2020, he went to Pendleton and scanned every John and Norm Nat strip he could find. And on June 5th of 2020, released a Google Drive with all 38 scans and shared it with the Garfield community, alongside a full documentary on his channel about the whole event. And 38 John comics were preserved. And since then, very few other comics have been found. There's still around 60 comics that have not been found yet. But it's not like they won't be. If a YouTuber can find 38 of them on accident just by doing a little digging, imagine what people searching just for it can do. We have leads, and people are still searching for them. It's important that they get preserved, to show how such a big franchise started out. And I think eventually, those 60 strips will turn up somewhere, and will be preserved. But for real, where did Lyman go? He was in every John comic, but right when they focused on Garfield, Lyman just disappeared. Hashtag justice for Lyman. The Nintendo DS was the perfect home for licensed video games. Limitations meant they could put less effort into the game. And it had the biggest install base of any other console. So we saw an insane amount of shovelware put onto shelves. So of course, Garfield had to get in on the action. And yeah, there are plenty of Garfield DS games. But I wanted to focus on one of the games that was going to release, but was cancelled. And to this day, has no footage or even screenshots of it. All we have is a name, box art, and plot. It's called Garfield Bound for Home. It was planned to release alongside the first Garfield movie, as sort of a tie-in. It would have been part of the mountain of Garfield content Fox was churning out just to capitalize on the popularity of the movie. We had games, toys, books, and mainly the Garfield TV specials from the 80s re-released on DVD. This was a quick and easy way to make money, because they didn't have to make any new content. They could just plop this mountain of pre-existing crap onto a disc and sell it to a whole new market of both new fans and DVD player owners. And since most people loved those specials, and now they could get them on DVD, they sold out like hotcakes. So Fox just kept making re-release after re-release after re-release, and eventually, they were literally out of Garfield content to put on DVD. So you know what they did? They re-released -re some of the DVDs by bundling three DVDs together into one big box set called Garfield's Cat Tales, which contained Garfield as himself, Garfield Fantasies, and Garfield Travel Adventures. And you might wonder why I'm talking about this specific box set of all things. Well, that's because in the original release of this set, alongside the three DVDs, it would contain a pamphlet advertising other Garfield content. Back at that time, practically every DVD release con contained some sort of advertisement, and sometimes a whole pamphlet which is exactly what this box set contained. And they advertised the Garfield website, a rewards program, a promotional tote bag, and some phone wallpapers. But interestingly, alongside these products was an advertisement for a Garfield DS game called Garfield Bound for Home. It showed the cover art, the game, then the console it's releasing on, the publisher, and a full description of the plot saying at the end of it that you can expect the game on Holiday 2005, only two months away from this box set's release. And this was already pretty strange. This was the first anyone had heard of this game's existence, and it was already releasing in just a few weeks? And if this game was really that close to release, then why didn't they show any gameplay screenshots? Practically every other game advertisement at that time had a ton of screenshots with it. But not this one, I guess. And expectedly, the holiday release window came and went with absolutely no info. And the game was never seen by the public again. This ad was the only time this game was shown to the public. And it was completely lost to time. And it stayed like that for decades. Until 2022, when Reddit user Chili Coop rediscovered the pamphlet in his old box set and posted it to r slash Garfield. 
revealing to the world this lost game. And people realized that this game was lost, and the hunt began. Members of the Garfield Discord searched everywhere, contacted former employees, looked at old listings, pretty much looked everywhere. While the search was happening, people even discovered other Garfield lost media. But the actual thing they were searching for was not found. The only real bit of info we got is we learned that the game was listed in a catalog of upcoming European DS games, which was sent to journalists. And the game was there, going under the codename Garfield, with a much larger release window. A similar listing was found on a European forum, revealing early box art and saying the game would be single player. And there were a few Amazon listings in a few countries. But you couldn't buy them, and the release date listed came and went with no game. So this info didn't get us any closer to finding the game. But they continued searching, and soon enough, we found a Netherland forum from August 2005, with a listing for the game, showing a full plot synopsis. We finally found some real info. So according to this, the plot would be that Garfield angered the Wild Cat, the leader of the Cat Gang, and in retaliation, they hatch a nefarious scheme to get rid of Garfield and Odie by dressing up as Garfield and taking his place by kidnapping the real Garfield and putting him far, far away. So Garfield must team up with Odie to make it back home before the wild cat can bankrupt John by making him buy more and more cat food. This plot sounds like one from a 2D platformer, which were the most common genre licensed games would go with, but this game was actually going to be a 3D platformer. I'm guessing similar to Mario 64 DS. It would be level based, featuring only 8 levels we know of, but featuring 7 bonus minigames and 3 levels of difficulty. Based off all of this, it looked like the game had a clear outline and gameplay style, possibly even being in post production. But for some reason, this game was cancelled out of nowhere. And we still have no idea why. Despite it seeming like the game was complete, we still know pretty much nothing concrete about the game. Based off forum post from before the pamphlet's release, implying the game was cancelled, this could mean that the game was already cancelled by the time the pamphlet released. Garfield products are notorious for taking a long time to be approved for release, so it's possible that the pamphlet was made while the game was still being worked on, and by the time the pamphlet was released to the public, the game was long dead. It's surprising that a game from such a prominent character, releasing when Garfield popularity was at its height, could just be cancelled. And never seen again. The closest we've come to gameplay is this video from Nevin64DX, which shows the supposed game over screen. And we don't even know if it's real or not. And that's really all the concrete info we got. At the time of recording, the game is still lost media. Or maybe it isn't. Because the main theory about this game is that Garfield Bound From Home wasn't cancelled, but was instead renamed and repacked as a different Garfield DS game. There were four Garfield DS games released on the DS, that being Garfield's Nightmare, Garfield The Tale of Two Kitties, Garfield's Fun Fest, and Garfield Gets Real. It's pretty common for games to go through a lot of changes from reveal to release, so it's possible that the game went through some of their own changes, whether that's to line up with a movie release, or a holiday season, or just a regular rebranding. So let's see if any of these games match up with what we know. So starting off with Garfield's Nightmare, it's a 2D platformer, not a 3D platformer like how Bound From Home was described. But this game does feature 3D minigames, and Bound For Home supposedly had a few 3D minigames, so those might have been reused. Garfield A Tale of Two Kitties on the DS is actually neither a 2D or 3D game, but a 2.5D game, similar to the Donkey Kong Country Returns games. But the other version of this game for home consoles is full 3D with co-op, matching up with Bound for Home's supposed gameplay. But it's pretty unlikely that they completed a game, renamed it, and released it on every single console except the one it was originally made for. And also, they literally couldn't have transformed Bound for Home into Tale of Two Kitties, because that would have needed them to get a new license, since Bound for Home seemed to be based off the comics or animated shows, but Tale of Two Kitties is, obviously, based off the movie and they would have needed to get the thumbs up from all the major people involved in the movie just to get permission. And that would have needed them to rework all the models, sprites, music, voice lines, 
and the gameplay in just a few months. It would have been quicker to make an entirely new game. So I highly doubt that they would go through all that trouble just to salvage a game nobody knew of. Now moving on to Garfield's Funfest, it has absolutely nothing in common with Bound for Home. It's a pixelated 2D auto runner, and it's clear that, that is not what Bound from Home was turned into. This game is clearly just some quick shovelware for the crappy straight-to-DVD Garfield movie of the same name. And last but not least, Garfield gets real for DS. So at first, I thought this game was a 3D platformer, just like what Bound for Home sounded like, but then I played it, and it's a weird cross between a 2D and 3D game. The game is technically 3D, but you can't move forward or backward, you can only move left and right, and you need to collect coins while avoiding obstacles flying at you. You can use a DS stylus on the bottom screen to make Garfield do a roll or another maneuver. It's not a good game, and the gameplay and story have practically nothing in common with what we know about Bound for Home. Granted, I've only played two levels, but I've seen other playthroughs, and I'm confident in saying this is not Bound for Home. So those were all the games that Bound for Home could have been turned into. Garfield's Funfest has literally nothing in common with Bound for Home, its minigames might have been reused in Garfield's Nightmare, and Bound for Home could have been heavily reworked into Tale of Two Kitties and or Garfield Get Real. I think a possible scenario is that Bound for Home was scrapped fairly early in development, but not before they had completed a few minigames, which might have been reused in Garfield's Nightmare. And they just assumed nobody would actually read the pamphlet, and they could just quietly cancel the game. But a few years ago, some searchers reached out to former employees of The Game Factory, and the employees hadn't even heard of Bound for Home. And while maybe those employees just forgot, there's still a big hit to the theory. The developer, Humansoft, doesn't even mention Garfield anywhere on their website. We know so little about this game that the only real thing happening in the search is thinking up possible theories. The most realistic and most likely theory the searchers have come up with is that the game was actually developed not by developers of the DS games, but instead a developer of the GBA Garfield games, Interactive Visions. Think about it, they've made Garfield games in the past, and they were making DS games at the time of Bound for Home's theoretical development, and around that time Bound for Home would have released, Interactive Visions actually went bankrupt, being bought soon after, and maybe the new parent company cancelled the game or just lost the license. This is the closest we've got to an actual answer, but none of it's solid evidence. The search is really all speculation. But we didn't leave empty-handed. You see, while the search was happening, people discovered other Garfield Lost Media, like a tech demo for Garfield The Tale of Two Kitties on the DS, showing a rotating sphere of Garfield hair for some reason, and, and also a press kit for the Garfield Tale of Two Kitties movie. That's pretty cool. But the actual thing people were searching for is no closer to being found than it was a few years ago. The search is still going on, so it's still possible for this game to be discovered at some point. But I'm not holding my breath. So it looks like Garfield Bound for Home isn't coming home anytime soon. So for the last segment of this video, I wanted to talk about one of the funniest pieces of Garfield Lost Media, the Garfield Couch. One of the most known aspects of the Garfield brand is all the sellout merchandise. If it exists, there's a Garfield version of it. It's insane just how much Garfield merch is out in the world. I mean, the Garfield brand is pretty much all merch now. So in the sixth episode of the comedy sketch show, I Think You Should Leave, they made a sketch making fun of the Garfield oversaturation. And they did that by building an entire room made only out of Garfield merch. Garfield walls, lamps, doorways, Garfield books, the whole nine yards. And most of the stuff in this room was made custom for this sketch. But by far the most iconic thing in this room is the Garfield couch. I mean, this is honestly hilarious, especially with the eyes looking at you. And even though it was custom made for this sketch, it looks like it could be a real product. And it kinda is, cause there are multiple official Garfield couches and armchairs. Even new ones releasing for the Garfield movie. But this one specifically went viral, cause of the exaggerated design. But strangely, nobody knows the whereabouts of this couch in modern day. I mean, this thing couldn't just disappear, it's a Garfield couch. So where did it go? 
Well, there have been some listings for the couch on sites like Facebook and eBay, listed by supposed owners. One of the Facebook listings even has a description that says this about the couch. To whoever left this pristine example of luxury furniture in their hard rubbish pile, you have transformed me and my partner's life. Something about they eyes. And from the image, it looks like the couch has some wear and tear on it, which could mean that it was a normal furniture item in someone's home. Like, imagine walking into someone's house, and they have this in the living room, staring back at you. Take a seat, John. Don't be afraid. Go on. It's me, Garfield. I gotta give props for the people who made this for that one episode. They did a great job. And I hope this couch is found, so we can see more of the wacky adventures of the Garf couch. But we all know the Garfield couch pales in the comparison to the Odie armchair. I mean, look at him. He's adorable. The Garfield couch is just another entry in the long lineage of Garfield Lost Media. With a franchise as big as Garfield's, there's bound to be some media that slips through the cracks. And even though I talked about a lot of it, there's still so much more Garfield Lost Media, like the many Paws Inc. merch prototypes, the Garfield Movie 3, the Garfield Serial, the Lost Levels in the Garfield Caught in the Act game, but I wanted to focus on some of the most interesting examples. It's really crazy how much Garfield content exists. Almost as much as Mickey Mouse, and that's saying something. But unlike Mickey Mouse, Garfield seems to be making a comeback, and becoming more than just merch. A few years ago, Paramount bought the Garfield IP, and since then, he's appeared in a ton of video games, got his own racing game and party game, He's got a new 2D animated series for Nickelodeon, and he's even got a new animated movie starring Chris Pratt, being made by the same studio that made Into the Spider-Verse. Garfield is one of the biggest franchises in history. So like it or not, this fat cat isn't going anywhere. I'm Calvin Benson, and thank you for watching.